Let's start off talking about tailwinds as opposed to, I know what many people on the call always want to focus on the headwinds. Internationally, I think you guys had a very strong fourth quarter. Uh, when you take currency out of the equation, your operating profit was up 10%, your operating margins over 20% internationally. What is it you're seeing there that has led to what I believe was maybe the best performance you've had in that part of your business? Thank you, David, and it absolutely was the best performance that we have seen. And it's just a verification that our transportation transformation initiatives are really on track. And uh, we're focusing on uh, Europe, we're focusing on uh, emerging markets. There are opportunities out there, they're in select markets, and uh, but that's where we think that we can focus, and we had very good success and we think that uh, that will continue right through 2019 when we talked about having uh, double digit uh, operating profit margins in 19 on top of 18. Yeah, well, you've talked about 2019 as a pivot point, and it was mentioned in the conference call as well. Certainly, maybe something that investors are focusing on this morning, sending the stock up. Explain why it's a pivot point, how the leverage in your business is working to make it a pivot point. I think it's the timing of our transformation initiatives. It's the investments we have made in the uh, strategic imperatives that we're focused on. So the small and mid-sized customer, e-commerce, global growth markets, and healthcare and life sciences. So it's those four areas. We've added a lot of investments to make our uh, network more efficient, our global smart logistics network. And all of those are coming together with our strategies, and uh, we're implementing the way that we thought we would. Um, all right, let's talk a bit about the domestic uh, economy, though, uh, and what you're seeing here in the States in terms of trends. Uh, I guess that's a question in and of itself, but specifically in terms of um, the drivers of domestic package volume right now, what are you seeing? Uh, E-commerce and the small and mid-sized customers would be the two areas that uh, that we think are driving most of that. We had uh, record volumes this peak season because of the investments we had made. We were able to provide best-in-class service, and we take that momentum into 2019. But the U.S. economy is is solid right now, and. Uh, and it's certainly providing opportunities for us. David, there's a lot of angst about the global economic slowdown. We, we lost this synchronized global economic recovery. From, from your vantage point, how slow is it getting? How would you characterize it for the rest of the year? Now, I would say it's a, a slight slowdown. I was at the World Economic Forum last week, and if you listen too much to people, you would think that uh, that we're getting into a recession or, or getting into a drastic slowdown. But everything I'm hearing and seeing is it could slow down slightly, but there are still uh, good opportunities. There are trade concerns, uh, no doubt about that, but also trade opportunities like the U.S.-Mexico-Canada agreement. We believe that's really going to benefit small and mid-sized customers, and we will be able to help them deal with that. David, what about disruptions from the weather? I mean, you and competitors, Amazon, had to suspend all sorts of deliveries because of these frigid temperatures in the Midwest. How big of a deal is that going to be and how much of a delay? You know, it's, uh, it's not as big a deal as you would think. Now, it's certainly a big deal that uh, as cold as the weather is and, uh, and our people just have dealt with weather for, for years and years. So we have a pocket uh, full of zip codes, you know, a couple of hundred maybe that we're not going to be able to reach because of weather, whether there's curfews set by the government or something. But overall, our network is running and uh, it is running quite well. So we'll be OK getting through the next couple of days. A real testament to our people, though. I, my hat's off to them for what they're doing. 
David, uh, the debate continues to rage about the effectiveness of uh, last year's uh, tax reform to actually increase significantly capital expenditures like companies like your own. You've made significant capital expenditures. You also benefited, obviously, from a lower tax rate. But I'm curious, is there anything you have done over the last year or are planning to do this year that you would not have done previously as a result of tax reform? What the tax reform has allowed us to do is really accelerate some of the reinvestment in our network, in technology, in uh, buildings, things that, uh, that we wanted to do all along, we could have done to a lesser degree. But with this tax relief, we were able to accelerate earlier into this year and next year. And we did exactly what we said we would do when we were advocating for uh, tax reform, that we would invest back into the business in the U.S. and other places, and we've absolutely done that. And what about returns to shareholders? What are your plans there? Uh, obviously, the company is going to be generating a significant amount of free cash flow as well this year. Yes, we had uh, a significant free cash flow in 2018, will again in 2019. And uh, the good news for our investors is the 10 percent plus so the low teens uh, operating profit improvement that we're forecasting in 2019 in all three of our business units. So it's very balanced. And of course, our investors will get the benefit of, uh, of those efforts.